it is a momentous occasion because I have completed the goddamn welding on this chassis. Right, well, today we are all positive because the kids have gone back to school, which means we can crack on so much more. Uh, my job today is um, I'm removing silicon where the Land Rover um, decal was on the front bonnet and I'm going to sand it back, ready for the mount. What's your job, big guy? I'm going to uh, look at converting these side panels into king cab panels, so I um, already sort of preempted uh, on the old Instagram that we're going to do a king cab conversion on this one and alluded to it in previous videos um, what I'm basically going to look at doing is deconstructing these van panels which we've got right here um, and see if we can make them shorter uh, but obviously they still need to be strong to support the roof and uh, we're going to try and not touch things like the seatbelt mounts and stuff so let's see how it goes let's crack on so I've had a very quick look over it, I think uh, best protocol for us is going to be to try and remove this back section and then reattach it further up the side panel. Uh, it basically means then that stuff like this, uh, which obviously is the seatbelt mounts, really important. Um, we've got the profiles for the seal, you know, that sort of stuff doesn't get changed. And when I've been looking, um, the way Land Rover done it, they've got a couple of rivets into these corner pieces that then go under the fold up, We've got a very similar arrangement on the bottom, it's just like a corner plate that's riveted on so I'm going to drill out the rivets, drill out those top rivets we'll cut this side bit down where it needs to be and then we'll look at remounting that up there so obviously I just have to put up with the noise of Jen sanding um, we've basically set this up, we've pulled the tub down very briefly laid this on the side along with the uh, canvas hoop to kind of work out where our cut line is going to be now I do film that because depending on what size king cap you're actually going to make that's going to determine where you're going to cut, you've got to measure that and work that out for yourself I've got a cut line here, uh, chopping it with a normal angle grinder which I know everyone says for aluminium it's no good but it's got a slit to disc on, it's a really thin aluminium machine so I'm just going to whip up and uh, start this whole process I've managed to retain the brackets for reconnecting to the sides. Um, I had plenty of a look over it and the original intention was to drill out a couple of rivets on this side. That panel that I've cut, we're going to put a fold in the end and re-rivet on. Uh, after looking, uh, we obviously we, we don't own a, a metal folder here and it looked like it was going to be really difficult to try and get that hammered around the corner and, and look factory so what I've actually gone with uh, is slightly compromised but we won't be riveting on this side what we'll actually be doing is just cutting it flush with this end bit riveting down this way we'll emulate these rivets and we'll try and make it look factory um, and to be honest I think once it's painted up until somebody told you that's not how it's meant to be put together I don't think you're really going to tell not unless you're a proper lander of a nut Okay, so just to give you a quick look at what I've actually done uh, so you see this is the corner bracket uh, rather than cut through this I basically just went over the end of the two rivets just with the angle grinder just to clear those off um, so that you retain that corner piece same with this top bit if I can get a decent view of it um, again rather than cut it 
uh, the two rivets that were just on the end, nipped the top of those up just to keep that corner bracket uh, complete. And now what I'm going to do is just work out uh, how much of this I need to trim off so that it can uh, slide down uh, and again just on this top bit just how much of this because these uh, where these sheets folded round it, it is separate um, so I can basically trim down here and retain the full of the sheet and the point is that we can trim this back so that the end of this sheet will slide back right up until it's flush with the corner um, so let me start trimming some bits away it's probably going to be easy to explain to you once I show you Okay, so this probably makes it uh, the easiest way to show you. Um, so basically just been fiddling, taking little tiny bits away, unfolding metal. But you can see from this side, it's all the way along the edge. Quite nicely, uh, once you've got a couple of rivets, uh, just securing this down, uh, and obviously some sealer between, that'll be absolutely fine. On the top, we've got this original L plate, so put a couple of drill holes through there, and um, put some rivets in. You see on this side, obviously, you've got the two rivets, so there's going to be exactly the same mechanism there. Uh, on the bottom, so this is the original side off this panel, which extends down to just before this hole. So again, we'll put the two rivets into probably the uh, the original rivet holes there, uh, and probably put one through into that side piece. So you can see you've got the two rivets just going here. Yeah, I think I'm probably just going to end up putting one straight through there. Uh, just so that that side's nice and secure. So I'll get some sealant out, we'll get riveting, we'll get it all together and then we'll show you the finished article. Okay, and through the wonders of video editing we have not one but two completed side panels. Just checking in with your mama. <laughs> what are you up to? What have you been doing? As you can see, I am still sanding. The silicon, if I can get it to come around here, came off really 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 easy here so all this is all sanded back ready I'm literally just on the fan little detail around all the little rivets of sanding and then we'll be ready for mounting So you might be wondering why I'm drilling into the uh, freshly sanded bonnet and uh, effectively because we're doing the king cab conversion we've got no room to put the uh, spare wheel on the back. Now I'm not a fan of having it in the cab, I'm not a fan of having it in the pickup and I don't particularly like swingaways on a canvas back. Um, just don't look right in my eyes, especially if you've not got the canvas on it just sticks out like a sore thumb. So doing what most people would class as a bodge, this is the spare wheel mount off the uh, rear door that was on the truck you can see apart from the brown sealant uh, it's relatively new this must have been replaced relatively recently so we're going to make use of it uh, we're going to mount this into the bonnet and we're going to have a uh, bonnet mounted spare so this is where we're at with it lovely bonnet mounted spare nice and secure use both the uh, plates so it's in there it's not going to pull out obviously with this being a 300 TDI this has got the stronger bonnet anyway um, I don't think you can do this to TD5 because I think the bonnet bends quite easily especially with a, a tire that's this size because obviously these are normal skinny tires got a good start on the king cab conversion obviously we've got both side panels done uh, they learn, uh, line up nice and well, they also line up across and if I can squeeze through it's a bit tight to get a good view here but you can see there's enough room there um, and this frame is just off a 110 double cab so it's going to have the exact same uh, cab area as a, a 110 double cab but obviously it's not going to have the rear doors and it's going to have the exact same pickup bed as a 110 pickup uh, and then we've just got a canvas cover to go over this. So join us again next time when we'll be doing maybe the roof, maybe some chassis work, maybe some suspension work. We just never know, do we, darling? Nope. <laughs> See you next time.